You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golson. It is Thursday, June 13th. Blues won. <laughs> I'm so excited. Go sports team. Yeah. Hey, it was it, it was. was a pretty fantastic night downtown. It we was. were at Bush Stadium and uh, it was pretty incredible. I'm not sure I can hear out of my ears right now. It was <laughs> That's so why you couldn't loud. hear me when I was talking to you. What? Exactly. Yeah, yeah oh, so man. it was a very exciting time here in St. Louis. Yes. Uh, well, and even though the the actual last game was in Boston, right? You w- yeah, you wouldn't know it looking at the footage from the Enterprise Center <laughs> That's or Bush true. Stadium. Hey, we were in the yeah, rain was, last night. <laughs> for those of you who don't follow St. Louis sports, St. Louis fans were filling the uh, both the Enterprise Center where the Blues play mm-hmm. and Bush Stadium also opened up last night mm-hmm. to both showing it on the big screen there. Yeah. So big and deal like in St. Louis. And everywhere else in the streets too in the city, it was pretty great. I'm excited. There you go. KFUO Sports report for you. <laughs> uh, two Super good things excited. on deck today. We get to uh, meet the missionaries. We get to follow up with the missionaries. I yeah. am excited because we have been following this family since uh, they launched uh, and, and headed to the Dominican Republic um, a little over four years ago, almost mm-hmm. five years ago. So I'm excited to talk with the Fritchie family and uh, catch up with them, learn more about what's going on in the Dominican Republic. And, Pastor, take your vacation. Mm-hmm. Please. Please. For oh, your yes. good and you should use else's. the word oh. please. Thank you for reminding me to use my manners. Um, so that's in the second half. Stick around for that. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about them at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. Joining us in studio this morning, the Reverend Joel and Clarion Fritchie, serving the Lord in the Dominican Republic. Good morning, Fritchies. Good, good morning. morning. Good to be back with you. It's uh, always a joy to, to catch up with you, hear your stories of what's going on in the mission field, what's happening with the Fritchie family, um, and um, I, I think the most exciting thing is who's learning the language the fastest, so we'll get to that in, in just a little bit. Uh, so so tell us, uh, th- you started, you headed out into the mission field over, over four years ago, is that right? Yes, we arrived in the Dominican Republic in February of 2015, it's hard to believe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh, time I, well, I remember you were here for orientation. I remember getting the stories while you were here, and then touching base with you. You, you were, you've even been gracious and and uh, done some calls on Skype with us from the field when you're not sure if the electricity is going to stay on or not. That's uh, right. <laughs> Boy, we've come a long way. <laughs> so, share with us some of those stories that uh, the stories that, that tell us about um, what is the focus of the mission in the Dominican, and we'll also hear about family life too. All right. So, uh, we're all about spreading the word, planting Lutheran churches, and showing mercy uh, on the field in Latin America, and specifically in the Dominican Republic. I was called to be a church planter, um, sent to Santo Domingo, the capital city in the Dominican Republic. And, boy, we were we were so green when we arrived on the field. <laughs> and uh, now I think we're considered veteran missionaries. So, wow. It's, it's just four hilarious. years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, originally, uh, yeah, we started out in the capital city, Santo Domingo, uh, sent to uh, a church plant, Amigos de Cristo. I was serving alongside our only Dominican national pastor at the time, Pastor Willie Gaspar, uh, at the congregation to support him, uh, to to guide him along in his first few years of ministry, uh, study with him, go on visits with him. And it was really a mutual exchange. It was it was pretty awesome because uh, I could bring my 15 or so years of experience as a pastor uh, to, to play, and he could, in turn, help me with language, mm-hmm. culture, all those things that uh, we were just getting into when we arrived on the field. And so it was a, a really, really great arrangement. And we served there happily uh, for about three years, but uh, two years into our time, um, it was time to open the doors of our seminary uh, on the field. For at least the last 10 years in the strategic plan, uh, we had planned to start a seminary that would serve specifically uh, Central America and the Caribbean uh, in Latin America. And uh, I was asked to be director of the seminary. <laughs> so for me, it was a little complicated because we lived down in Santo Domingo. And the seminary was going to be located up in Santiago, about two, two and a half hours away. And so for a year's time, we actually commuted, the entire family. Mm. And mm. we always laughed because uh, we got in the car on, oh, what was it, Clarion? On Fridays, uh, Friday afternoons, and we'd make our way <laughs> from Santiago down to Santo Domingo. 
And then on Sunday afternoon after church, we'd make our way from Santo Domingo back up to Santiago, and we'd load up our our van, which is called a guagua in the Dominican (laughs) Republic. And uh, it'd be Clarion and, and our boys and our two dogs. And our two seminary students. Wow. <laughs> in, in a, it was always in that order. No. Um, but uh, so things have, have changed a lot on the field. And then uh, a year ago, uh, recognizing the difficulty of, of that commute and all that, uh, we were asked to move full time to Santiago. So now I serve a small mission congregation in Santiago um, in a community called Pueblo Nuevo. I've uh, been there almost a year now mm-hmm. and uh, still serve as seminary director. So I've got that dual role. Um, but everything really revolves around church planting. And if you're going to plant churches in a country, you also need a plan to fill the pulpits and altars in those churches with pastors. I'm a missionary and I'm not going to be on the field forever. Uh, well, I might be on the field forever, but <laughs> I'm not going to be pastor of that little church forever. Um, the goal is to raise up Dominican pastors, mm-hmm. uh, and that's the role of the seminary. Now, for me, um, in these four years looking back, uh, it's been really cool because I can see uh, some of the fruits uh, of our labor that the Lord has worked in these years. When we started at Amigos de Cristo in Santo Domingo, um, we started mentoring uh, a young man, uh, a member of the congregation, who was from one of the first families of that congregation, one of the first families. I think uh, Pastor Ted Cray married the mom and dad, uh, baptized the kids, mm-hmm. confirmed the kids, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, back in his early years on the field. And uh, this young man, Miguel, was uh, playing piano, playing keyboard uh, for church services when we arrived. He was in youth group. About a year, year and a half into our time there, uh, we had really grown close to Miguel. He's friends with our boys. And Miguel knew I was into Greek and Hebrew and all that crazy stuff. (laughs) And he actually asked me, hey, pastor, would you teach me Hebrew? (laughs) He was, I think, 15 at the time. Wow. So uh, I thought, yeah, this will be great. This will be fun. Uh, I love doing this, and it'll be the first time I've done it in Spanish, so that'll be a real challenge. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I researched, found uh, uh, a text uh, to use, and ordered it from Amazon, uh, got it, gave it to Miguel, and I said, in two weeks, Miguel, we're going to start. And uh, so, you know, start taking a look at the at the book, uh, look at the alphabet and how it looks, and see if you can practice writing it. Two weeks later, we started. We were going to meet every Saturday for an hour. And I said, okay, let's get started, Miguel. He goes up to the board. He writes the entire alphabet in Hebrew, uh, you know, from right to left, uh, all the letters, and names them all. And I'm like, wow. You know, so Miguel's really intelligent, really dedicated, um, eager to serve. And uh, in uh, the last couple of years, uh, now he's finally graduated from high school and uh much to, to to my joy, he's going to start in the seminary uh, this awesome. next year. So he's going to have a little bit of a longer program. He's young. He's 18. And uh, so Miguel's going to enroll in university and in our seminary at the same time. So he's going to have kind of uh, a long program. Usually we offer a four-year program. He's probably going to do six, seven years because we want him to study and have a degree, uh, have a career alongside his pastoral vocation. So Uh, But we're really, really excited about that. So for me as a missionary, it's really cool to see a young man that we just started mentoring and serving uh, from the day that we started on the field to now and to see that all intersect in my work as uh, a church planter and as director of the seminary, seminary professor, uh, and to see Miguel growing in that way and now uh, on the road to pastoral ministry. It's really, really cool for me. That is awesome. And we could, uh, there's so many things to talk about yeah. with the seminary, but we have three minutes left. So uh, it's clear. Clarion, Clarion uh, needs to talk. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but Clarion, what, what has uh, the transition to culture and, and, uh, and family life in the Dominican been like for you and the boys? And it's, the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> we can't forget the dogs. We can't forget the dogs. <laughs> no, uh, it's been very interesting. Um, well, right from the beginning, it was interesting because we had to arrive at different times because of visas. And, you know, mm-hmm. whenever you're dealing with another country, you have to work through passports and visas and, and all that kind of stuff. So that was the first interesting thing is having to go by myself and my mm. two dogs. So right away, it was <laughs> it was something that wasn't planned. Um, <laughs> well, and just um, 
arriving and, you know, going into a house, here's your house with nothing in it. <laughs> You know, so that's a whole adventure of trying to get set up and mm -hmm. and to go to classes and start speaking in another language, um, to go into a store and, and not, you know, not know what things are called. Or every time you walk up to the cash register, your heart starts beating fast <laughs> because you don't know if you're going to say the right thing or if they're going to understand you or, you know, um, but there's also joys like your son being invited to make pizzas out of Papa John's because oh. he was so curious. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a it's a different type of culture and and. <clears throat> The people are so welcoming, so there are a lot of a lot of positives with that. Learning a new language and a culture, um, and the foods too. You know, um, getting to experience new mm -hmm. foods and and to Arroz see your y abishuelas, beans exactly. and rice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's our son Sergey's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and welcoming people into your house. Um, speaking of our son's favorite, um, we have a housekeeper who comes twice a week, and mm -hmm. she um, it's nice to talk with her in Spanish, and and she enjoys making food for us because the boys are so appreciative. They always <laughs> love the lunches that she makes so that's kind of fun and just um yeah getting to know the people and getting to experience um a new culture and their their um hospitality has been has been really um interesting yeah and of course uh the the, the burning question everyone wants to know who mm -hmm. does know spanish the best sergey yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll just say it our, our little ADHD boy who can soak up the language really, really he has quickly. no fear <laughs> and no filter well <laughs> No fear. That's the way to learn he the language. He can tell it's jokes different. in yeah. Spanish. He can oh, tell boy. really long jokes in Spanish. That's how you know he's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really neat, too, to see him tell a joke and just how, you know, our friend Carlos was just listening and then laughing with him. <laughs> it's just a special thing to to see. And but I don't think he knows Spanish better than Joel, but <laughs> he, of, the, of the three boys. He How does. can we keep up with uh, the Fritchie family and the, the work that's going on in the uh, the Lord's work going on in the Dominican Republic? We're still uh, sending out our newsletter about every other month now, reporting on uh, the work in the field, uh, in the church, and in the seminary. Uh, we do regular Facebook posts, uh, so we've got a Facebook page, uh, the Fritchie family, what is it? Fritchie family a la República Dominicana, yeah. something like that. And we'll be yeah posting uh, all of our visits here in the United States. We'll be taking pictures from... The churches that we visit and putting up up on there and also the the region maintains a facebook page as well uh latin america and the caribbean has a facebook page so follow that and you mm -hmm. can keep on top of all of our missionaries and all of our uh sister churches that we're in fellowship with and work with it's really cool the reverend joel and clary and fritchie serving the lord in the dominican republic thank you so much for joining us this morning on the coffee hour thanks thank for you. having us coming up in just a little bit pastor please take your vacation <laughs> I'm Eddie Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.